dog is dead. I'd got that far. I think someone killed the dog. How old are you? I'm 15 years and three months and two days. And what precisely are you doing in the garden? I'm talking to you. Okay. Why were you in the garden in the first place? I was holding the dog. Why were you holding the dog? I like dogs. Did you kill the dog? I did not kill the dog. You seem very upset about this. I'm going to ask you once again. Terrific. Young man, I'm going to ask you to stop making that noise and stand up, please. Calmly and quietly. Marvelous. Just flipping. I'm arresting you for assaulting a police officer. I strongly advise you to get into the back of the police car because if you try any of that monkey business again, you little shit, I am going to seriously lose my rag. Is that understood? Why would you kill a dog? I wouldn't. I think you would only kill a dog if A, you hate the dog, or B, you were lunatic, or C, you wanted to make Mrs. Shears sad. I don't know anybody who hated Wellington, so if it was A, it was probably a stranger. I don't know any lunatics either, so if it was B, it was also probably a stranger. Right. But most murders are committed by someone known to the victim. In fact, you are actually most likely to be murdered by a member of your own family on Christmas Day. Is that a fact? Yes, it is actually a fact. Therefore, Wellington is most likely to have been murdered by someone known to him. I only know one person who hates Mrs. Shears, and that's Mr. Shears, who divorced Mrs. Shears and left her to live somewhere else, and who knew Wellington very well indeed. This means that Mr. Shears is my prime suspect. Christopher. I'm going to find out more about Mr. Shears. You're soaking. Yes. Give me your coat. I'll hang it up. How was school? It was very good, thank you. Joseph Lummy took his trousers off and went to the toilet all over the floor of the changing room. And he tried to eat it, but Mr. Davis stopped him. Good old Mr. Davis, eh? Joseph eats everything. Does he? Yes, he once ate one of the little blocks of blue disinfectant that hang inside the toilets. And he once ate a 50-pound note from his mother's wallet. And he eats string and rubber bands and tissues and white paper and paints and forks and also he bangs his chin and screams a lot. I know how he feels. Christopher. Tyrone said there was a horse and a pig in the poo, so I said he was being stupid, but Siobhan said he wasn't. There were small plastic animals from the library that staff used to make people tell stories and Joseph had eaten them. Christopher, I've got to go out. Is it an emergency? What, why? I've just had a call. There's a lady. Her cellar has flooded. I've got to go out and fix it. Is it an emergency? Yes, mate. It is raining very heavily. It is. The rain looks like white spots. Christopher, if I go out, will you be okay? Yes, I will, because there's no one around because everyone's indoors. Good. Good, good. Good, lad. I like looking at the rain. Terrific. I like it because it makes me think about how the water in the world is connected. Does it? This water, this rain, has evaporated from somewhere actually like uh, the Gulf of Mexico or Baffin Bay. Now it's here in front of the house. I'll have my mobile with me. Yes? So you can call me if there's a problem. Yes. Behave yourself, Christopher, yeah? Yeah. I see everything. Most other people are lazy. They never look at everything. They do something which is called glancing, which is the same word for bumping off something and carrying on in almost the same direction. And the information in their heads is really simple. For example, if they are on a train looking out a window at the countryside, it might be one. I am sitting on a train looking out at a field that is full of grass. Two. There are some cows in the field. Three. It is sunny with a few clouds. Four. There are some flowers in the grass. Five. There is a village in the distance. Six. There is a fence at the edge of the field, and it has a gate in it. Then they would stop noticing anything, because they would be thinking something else like... I wonder if Julie's given birth yet. Or... I'm worried that I might have left the oven on. Or... I really want a bag of cheese puffs. But if I am sitting looking out of a window on a 
train onto the countryside, I'd notice everything. Like, one, there are 19 cows, 15 of which are black and white, and four of which are brown and white. Two, there's a village in the distance, with 31 visible houses, and a church with a square tower and a spire. Three, there was a plastic bag from Tesco in the edge, and a squashed Coca-Cola can with a snail on it. Four, I can see three types of grass, and two types of flowers in the grass. Five, the cows are facing mostly uphill. Six, there are three different visible nimbostratus clouds. Seven, the hedge is moving in to suggest that there was a wind blowing from a northwesterly direction. Eight, there was a white Reebok running shoe in the corner of the field. Nine, there was a Coca-Cola. 10, there is the snail. The snail, there is, there are cows. The cows are facing the snail. There are nimbostratus clouds. There is a wind, there is a hedge. There is, there is seven, four, seven, four hundred of Bowie. There is white Reebok trainer. There is graffiti. Jane plus Ian forever. What time is it? Seven minutes past two in the morning. I can't sleep. It's because you're scared of Mr. Shears. You're being silly. There's nobody about. You can hear traffic. What cars are there? A Fiesta, a Nissan Micra, a Peugeot, a Ford Granada. What colors are they? I can't tell. The, all I can see is orange and black and mixtures of orange and black. Look at the things people have in their front garden. Oh, yes, is that an elf? It's a gnome. And a teddy bear. And a little pond. Look. And an oven. Uh, I like looking at the sky. Me too. I like it because you know you were looking at the stars, which are hundreds and thousands of light years away from you. And some of the stars don't exist anymore because the light has taken so long to reach us. They've already died or they have exploded and collapsed into red dwarfs. And it makes you feel very small. And if you have difficult problems in your life, it's nice to think that they are something which is called negligible, which means that they are so small, you don't have to take them into account when you're calculating something. I can't see any stars, Ian. No. It's because of the light pollution in London. All the light from the car headlights and the street lights and the floodlights and the light from the building, they reflect off little particles from the atmosphere and they get in the way of the light of the stars. Christopher! I have to go. Don't. I have to. Siobhan? Where are you going? Siobhan? Siobhan? Thank you very much for clapping, and thank you very much for staying behind to listen to how I answered the question on my maths A level. Siobhan said it wouldn't be very interesting, but I said it was. She didn't tell me what I should use, so I decided to use all the machines and computers in the theater, including VL3500 arc lights, which are moving lights, light emitting diodes, Maya MSL2 speakers, a DPA boom mic, and Sennheiser radio transmitter, four PTD20KS Panasonic overhead projectors, and a stage manager called Name who will operate these. I had 90 minutes to answer 19 questions, but I spent 14 minutes doing moaning and groaning, which meant I only had four minutes to answer this question. Show that a triangle with sides that can be written in the form n squared plus one n squared minus 1 and 2n, where n is bigger than 1, is right angled. And this is what I wrote. Start the clock. If a triangle is right angled, one of its angles will be 90 degrees and will therefore follow Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras said that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, to put it simply, if you draw squares outside the three sides of a right angled triangle, that out of the area of the two smaller squares, this will be equal to the area of the larger square. This is only true if the triangle is right angled. Come on, Bluey! The A level question is an algebraic formula for making right angled triangles. Algebra is like a computer program that works for whatever numbers you put into it. 
n squared plus 1 is the biggest number in the equation, which makes it the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle. To find the area of a square, you must multiply the length by the width. So the area of this square is 2n times 2n, which equals 4n squared. The area of this square is n squared minus 1 times n squared minus 1, which equals n to the power of 4 minus 2n squared plus 1. Now, if we add those squares together, this equals n to the power of 4 plus 2n squared plus 1. Now, we need to find the area of the square of the hypotenuse, which is n squared plus 1 times n squared plus 1, which is equal n to the power of 4 plus 2n squared plus 1, which is the same term. So the area of two squares adds up to the area of the larger square. So all my squares fit together to satisfy Pythagoras' theorem. So the triangle is right angled. And that is how I got an A. Confetti.